Let us pray. Lord, we are so blessed to, to be here, and we just give thanks for the gift of resurrection. Thank you for the offering of new life, and we just come to you at this time. Take these words, our hearts and minds, which we offer now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, it's so wonderful to see all of you with us and to be able to share in this incredible celebration. And what a gift it is. We just give thanks for the people who've helped set this church up for our choir, their wonderful music, and we are able to share together in this time. You know, normally we have a children's chapel that takes place, but we have our children with us today. In a short while, they're going to help me because there's a strange suitcase that's sitting here, and we've got to work out what's going on. But you know, we normally have the children's chapel, and I know there was a time in one of the churches where they were having children's chapel, and they finished the children's chapel and said, okay, we need to go back now into church, and you need to be quiet. Shh. And so the children all looked at him, her, and she said, do you know why we need to be quiet? And one little person put up their hand and said, because everybody's sleeping. <laughs> I hope you're awake today. <laughs> Well, you know, there's um, another story that I heard. There were uh, two young boys um, in their teenagehood, and they were called Jason and Jeremy. They were in this neighborhood, and they were just tyrants in this neighborhood. Whenever they would go in front of some girls, they'd go, ah, and all the girls would run away. They'd go to some boys, and they'd steal some things from them. And it was known, if there's anything wrong... It's Jason and Jeremy. Well, one day, the mother said, I need to do something. And she set something up, and she came to Jason, and she said, I need you to, tomorrow afternoon to go to this church. There was a church close to them. And she said, there's a priest there, and I have organized for you to go and talk to him. Well, Jason was petrified. But the next afternoon, he went in through these big, big doors, dark. And he walked down this long passageway. Then he came to these stairs, and he walked up those creaky stairs all the way to the top. And then along the passageway again, all the way to this dark office. And he was so scared when he got there. And he knocked on the door, and there was the priest sitting on a chair. And he said, Jason, do you know where God is? And Jason looked at him, and his eyes got big. And he said to him again, Jason, do you know where God is? And Jason turned and ran, and he ran all the way down the passageway, down the stairs, down the next passageway, outside, and there was Jeremy with him, and he said, what's wrong? What's wrong? You look so scared. And Jason said, I am. He said, this church, they've lost God, and now they're blaming us for it all. <laughs> well, you know, all of us lose God at some time in our lives, and we have that searching for faith and trying to understand where God is and how God can fit in with us in our lives. And you know, the scripture that we had today was, in fact, a very helpful one to look at in terms of some of that searching that we did. Let me just give you an overview of what I just read, because what we have is that it is after the crucifixion of Jesus. He has been in the tomb, and Mary comes early in the morning to try to be with the body of Jesus again. And the stone has been rolled away. And there isn't a body there, and she's petrified. And so she turns and she goes as quickly as she can to be up with two of those disciples. And, he, and she says, 
there's something wrong. They've taken his body away. And so they get up and they head back to go and see what's going on. And they go and they look and they see that the body has gone. And what we read is that one of them, John says, and he believed that Jesus had risen. But there's not much more. What happens after that? Well, those two disciples go back home, is what we read. They didn't stand there and say, hallelujah, he's risen. They go back home. And Mary is left there still so confused and frightened and anxious and she sees these two angels and she says what's happening and then she sees what she thinks is the gardener and she says i don't know what they've done with jesus and then jesus says it is me i'm alive and things change dramatically let me lift up three things incredibly briefly about what I've just said. The first, it is okay to be uncertain. It is okay to be uncertain. You know, we often think if it was me back then and I had seen Jesus, I wouldn't have any problem. But they did. And they still had a problem to begin with. And we need to know that it's okay if we have questions, if we don't understand at all, we don't need to feel guilty. It's a part of our lives. And there is the time of uncertainty and questioning. But the second thing is, you have to stay with it. You have to stay with it. I mean, the two disciples left. Imagine. If Mary had said, oh, well, I'll head back with those guys and be with them and I'll just sit around with them. I don't know where he's gone. She didn't. She stayed there. She asked the questions. She was frightened. And then she realized and discovered that Jesus had risen. So you have to stay with it. Ask the questions. Stay with it. And number three, Jesus has risen. This is what we hold on to. It doesn't end with the questions. It doesn't end with the uncertainty. We move on and uphold that Jesus Christ has risen. Let me just share with you, in closing, a reflection that I have from my previous church that I was in. I was in the church in Maryland, just north of Baltimore, so I've been very aware of the crisis that we have had in Baltimore over this past week, and we uphold all of those people. But in our church that I was in, we were very blessed. We had a very large property. We had 52 acres of land, and the church was established in 1742. And so we had this huge cemetery around the church, and then there was a big field, and then there was the rectory, the house that Tessa and I, our family, lived in. And one of the things that I would often do is that I would walk across the field and then up through the cemetery and then over to the church offices where I would be working and then would walk home again as well. And I was talking with someone at one point, and he was talking about doing some exercise. And I said, well, I'm so blessed. I'm able to do this walking all the time through the fields and the cemetery and to the church. And he said, what was it like doing that, going through a cemetery? And I said, it was actually fine. It was really so much history there that I'd look at. And I said, you know, at the end of the day, I would walk through the cemetery and go home. And then I said that to myself again. I would walk through the cemetery and go home. 
That's what our faith is about. The end is not the cemetery, but we go home. This is Easter. This is the glory of the resurrection. Christ has risen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us stand and confess our faith.